Next on Worcester News tonight, a central Massachusetts woman in court today charged with murder. The new details we are learning. Plus, are the Paw Sox coming to Worcester? One city councilor says it's looking positive for the city. Good evening, I'm Olivia Lemon. A central Massachusetts woman facing a murder charge in connection to the death of a Westminster man. Investigators say 21 year old Julia Enright killed Brandon Chickless at her home in Ashburnham. His remains were found in Ringe, New Hampshire earlier this month. Our Chandler Walsh was in court today and joins us now with the details. Chandler. Olivia, today would have been Brandon Chickless's 21st birthday. His body was discovered by a jogger off of Route 119 in Ringe, New Hampshire, weeks after he was reported missing. Today, a woman charged with his murder was in court. 21-year-old Julia Enright is arraigned in Winchington District Court Tuesday. The Ashburn Hand woman is charged in the murder of Brandon Chickless. According to Worcester County District Attorney Joseph Early Jr., cell phone records led investigators to Enright's home. Mr. Chickless's cell phone records placed him at 171 Packard Hill Road in Ashburn Hand, Massachusetts on June 23rd. This indicates that the phone was either turned off or destroyed. Prosecutors say Enright admitted the two had been together on the 23rd, but she told police Chickless left to purchase narcotics and never returned. Evidence discovered in a tree house at Enright's home resulted in her arrest. It was determined that the victim's blood was present on the stairs leading to the tree house, on the inside of the tree house, under the tree house, and in the defendant's vehicle. It was apparent that the tree house had recently been cleaned and a new rug had been placed on the floor. The Worcester District Attorney's Office did not give a motive for Chickless's murder or his relationship with Enright. Chickless was from Westminster. The police chief there says it's a tough case for everyone. I'm sure it's very difficult for the family and my heart goes out to them. Enright is being held without bail. She'll be back in court at the end of July. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A car crash causing heavy delays on Interstate 290 in Worcester Tuesday afternoon. The crash left a sedan facing the opposite way on the highway with extensive front end damage. The accident happened just before exits 19 and 20. Multiple lanes were closed, causing slow moving traffic in the area. No word on any injuries. In an effort to protect residents, parts of Worcester will be sprayed Tuesday night to help prevent an increase of the West Nile virus in mosquitoes. In partnership with the Central Massachusetts Mosquito Control Project, larvicide has also been placed in 16,000 catch basins across the city. The insecticide targets against the larval life stage of mosquitoes. Worcester's DPH says residents whose yards will be sprayed tonight were notified by a reversed 911 phone call. Mosquitoes can lay eggs and hatch um, new mosquitoes in four days. So we're just really trying to make sure that people are doing um, what they can to um, mitigate mosquito breeding grounds even in their own yard. Residents are also asked to close windows and remain inside during the application and for 15 to 20 minutes afterwards. It's been about seven months since a tree infested by the Asian longhorn beetle has been detected in Worcester and surrounding towns. Crews continue to survey for signs and symptoms of the beetle all year long. According to the Asian longhorn beetle program, if an infested tree is detected, it will have to be removed. They say it's the only way to ensure the beetle has been destroyed. We found in a couple of trees, there could be residual populations that can't be identified from the ground or even from our climbers up in the trees. And we want to make sure that we provide enough time for that insect to make itself apparent. So we'll come back a couple of years later to double check, but not too much time to allow that uh, population to grow exponentially. And the beetle was first detected in Worcester in 2008. Since then, more than 36,000 trees have been cut down. Anyone with a valid compliance agreement sticker can dispose of host materials at the program's new disposal yard on Dr. Paul Ware Drive in Boylston. Well, are, are the paw socks coming to Worcester? It's been a popular question for almost a year across the city, and some counselors say even though they haven't seen the proposal, it's looking positive for Worcester. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now with more. Roslyn. Olivia, City Councilor Gary Rosen says he thinks Worcester's proposal is better than Rhode Island's, even though he hasn't seen it and is hopeful they will come to Worcester. 
Wearing a Pawtucket Red Sox hat, City Councilor Gary Rosen says he supports the team coming to Worcester, as long as it's a good deal for the taxpayers. It would be a terrific thing for Worcester. To me, it would be the biggest project we've ever had, but we don't have all the details. I just, from what I've heard, some of the details, I think it's going to be a proposal that the taxpayers, residential and commercial, are really going to be pleased with. He says the city council has not yet seen Worcester's proposal because discussions take time. There's nothing that's been decided upon. It's not an easy decision for the Pawsucks to leave their city and especially the state of Rhode Island. Last month, Rhode Island's governor signed legislation to keep the AAA affiliate in Pawtucket. In it, the Paw Sox would contribute $45 million to the $83 million project. The state and city would be responsible for the remaining $38 million in bonds. Rosen thinks Worcester's proposal is better and says the team has to make a decision soon. It takes a lot to design and build a state-of-the-art stadium. City Councilor Christian King says it's a great opportunity for Worcester, but says the City Council needs to ensure they have appropriate oversight over public dollars. Hopeful that this process continues and, you know, we'll have details about, you know, exactly what that financing looks like because, um, I believe that the funding sourcing should be such that it en enhances the city. Now, Rosen says once they see the proposal, it will probably go to the Economic Development Committee for public hearings. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. The Trump administration placing tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. It could benefit some businesses in the Worcester area. David and Martha Holly of Howard Products in Worcester say the price of aluminum has risen about 20% and steel is up about 10 to 15% in the past year. They say across the board, while their pricing may be going up, they are going up overseas as well. Trying to equalize the playing field. So it means that the material coming in is going to be more in line with the domestic material. Cost. Cost wise. Okay. So the domestic mills then are able to start increasing their prices a little bit and can compete with the overseas. So anything which supports American workers, American industry is something we're very much for. We'll live with the, oh, the little push and pull getting there because when we get there, we'll be much better off. And Howard Products are a sheet metal fabrication company. They perform things like 3D modeling, shearing and laser cutting. They say they are supportive of the president's tariffs. Governor Charlie Baker says he plans to sign a bill that would eliminate old state laws, including a ban on abortion. It comes as the governor criticizes a proposed federal rule that would ban clinics from sharing physical space and financial resources with abortion providers like Planned Parenthood. In a letter to the Trump administration, the governor said he's troubled by the proposal. Other provisions make counseling on abortion virtually impossible. The governor says the rule should be rejected in its entirety. Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healey has announced an investigation into e-cigarette cigarette manufacturers Juul Labs, Inc. Along with Juul, the investigation will also look at two online retailers. A.J. Healey says Juul's marketing campaign for e-cigarettes and vapes appeals to young people who are not old enough to buy the products or understand what chemicals are in them. It was their marketing. It's highly addictive and a dangerous combination that shouldn't be anywhere near the brains or the lungs of a 10, 12, 14, or 16 year old. And Healy says her office has sent cease and desist letters to two online vaping stores accused of violating Massachusetts laws. Softball players from across the East Coast making their way to Worcester for the Senior League Softball East Regional Tournament. Some have never been to the city before and say organizers do a great job at welcoming them in. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us now with the story. Brittany. Olivia, this is the 12th year in a row Worcester has hosted the tournament. Organizers say it's the ballpark, staff and hotels that make Worcester the perfect location. Cheering fans and teams have taken over city ballparks. The Senior League Softball East Regional Tournament is back in Worcester after first winning the bid in 2006. District Administrator Linda McGill says no other location compared. They checked out the facility. They checked out the amount of staff that you would have to work, your ability to raise money, and the hotels that you would have. 
teams from across the East Coast are competing. About a three hour ride from, from Haverstraat to here. I drove up here from Maryland. It was about five and a half, six hours, depending on traffic. This is Marty Heath's first time in Worcester. He says the organizers here are great at what they do. They cater to us umpires and the players and makes everybody feel good when they come here. They treat us great over here. Uh, we, we, the girls enjoy coming. It's always, it's always a fun time for everyone. The tournament is in its final days, and so far, Worcester's Jesse Burkett team is undefeated. The thing we're most happy about, I believe, is our defense. That we've not given up a run in these four games. It really brings a sense of pride, I believe, to the area. No matter like what that team is or any team that we play, I feel like we played our best, um, and we just show what we can do every single day. The local players say winning is nice, but it's about much more than just softball. It's creating friendships and bonds that, you know, will hopefully last a lifetime and memories that you're always going to have. Now single elimination games begin tomorrow with Jesse Burkett versus Delaware. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight.